Today I want to look at remolding family patches. Tell your neighbor, remolding family patches. I first of all want to define for us some terms. A mold, for many of us who are in the other before CBC, you would literally be in a class. And um, what would happen is that we would be asked in art and craft to go and look for soil and then make a, a, a car, you know, you used to make a cup. And you would remold Ungefinya. And you would think, and I said, No, no, Paka, what a Paganga Mate. Your class, your art, it comes out. Nowadays, they are doing with the plasticine and other things. And so sometimes, when something is not of the intended shape, um, you would remold it. Ungepaka Vizuri, and it comes. So that is what I want to talk about to shape something on the of I intended something to be able to bring a mold to bring what God desired it to be a patch of course is be a piece of cloth say uh, that men strengthen another you know we are trying to mend some family so all of it what I'm talking is trying to produce the family which God intended to be now in the fallen world our families are not perfect um if you are just perfect family I don't know I actually shared that testimony in the first service that I always look back and I ask myself, um, where are this perfect family? Because as so I said for some of you, I was my father left me when we were two years. My father, my, my brother was to be born. He's now born. It's now he follows me. He was born, but he didn't see his father because the father went back to Uganda, who's our father, and my mother attempted another marriage. And so we have two sisters. Some of you hear of my sisters after my brother didn't see the father. Now today you get to know that my father, my mother attempted another marriage and so we have two sisters. And so the marriage didn't succeed. There is a history and a day of another day. And then um, my father, the other side also, attempted some certain marriages. I think they are marriages because I know some of my stepsisters there. And so we have some other sisters there. Now, the other interesting part of the story is that actually the other side again, part of my sisters are of another religion. <laughs> I think when my father also passed on, my stepmother, the other side, found a Muslim. And the Muslim, they say, ladies don't have religion. So uh, when you get married, you become a religion. So my other stepsisters, the other side, Actually, um, they read some Arabic <laughs> kind of um, words. So that's our family. And I'm your senior pastor. Look at your neighbor and ask them, I want to see your family tree. So today we just want to introspect that if in our existence, what does God want us to bring out by virtue of knowing him and walking with him? And so I'll be taking you through the book of Ruth. And the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 1 to 20. And I want us to read together keenly and see what God is speaking to us in terms of remolding. Because we attempted to mold our families, but it lost some of the ships. And God is still calling to us and say, I'm still around. And you are still around. What can you do to produce the best in you? So the Bible says this, in the days when the judges ruled, Ruth, the book of Ruth, in the days when the judges ruled, there was famine in the land, and a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech, his wife's name, Naomi, and the names of his two sons who were Mahlon and Kilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem, Judah. They went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They were married. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about ten years, both Mahlon and Kilion also died. And Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. When she heard in Moab that, Lord, that, that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, 
Naomi and her daughters-in-law prepare to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, they left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show kindness to you as you have shown your dead and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud and said to her, We will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am, am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait un until they grow up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters, it is more bitter for me than for you, because the Lord's hand has gone out against me. At this, they, at, at this they wept again. Then Oprah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her goats. Go back with her. And remember their goats was not the God of, of their people was not the God of Israel. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or return back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be and your God my God. Where you die, I will die and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if anything but death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. Verse 19, so the two women went uh, on until they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. The woman exclaimed, can this be Naomi? Don't call me Naomi, she told them. Call me Mara, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. Lord, we thank you. As we reflect on this word, as family seated in this place, in anticipation of what you speak to us, I pray that you speak to us. I pray that you speak to our families. I pray that you speak to our circumstances. Even me as your servant, I commit and commend myself to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Very interesting story, which I have told you. There are different contexts of families. It's a nuclear family. Many of us, we come from the same house, father, mother, and son. Maybe we have somebody else. Then we have an extended uh, family. The, the book of Ruth, authored by Samuel, most likely, because it talks of when the judges ruled, is about an extended family of whereby the two or three ladies, all of them loses husbands, a context which if you extrapolate to us Africans, a breadwinner, because Israel was more patriarchal. And so in this context, actually, we are seeing a mother-in-law going with the daughters-in-law, and they are able to stand in a place of quest of what can we do. Things have not worked for us. One of the other fundamental that you need to actually underscore is that the families were actually running to where they ran to because there was famine. A challenge made them to run together because a good family will always want to share in good times. So when things hit, you all of you run away. It's not the way some of us, when things become difficult, to naacho wa naume, you know, kati pesa imeenda, mama na beba, sema ndarudi kama umepata kazi. Now, in this case here, the Bible says, Elimelech went with the family. He was going to look for people. And I don't, I'm not against some of you going to Europe and England. When life is difficult in Kenya, some of you are leaving our family. Go with your family to Australia. Amen. I am not. Australia natafuta, natafuta. Elimelech went with the family to that place. The worst is that he died. And when he died, his sons also died. My friend, boy child, things were not good. <laughs> One as well, son. So the guy child are left in a different context. Keep reflecting on that as we go along.
So um, in this context then, we want just to explore and see what the Bible says. Um, and so um, I want to begin and say that this episode happens during the hardship. Um, Famine forces Elimelech and his son and his wife Naomi to flow from the, flee from their country to, um, or, or, of Moab. And that happens to many of us when we have challenges. It forces us to ask questions. Can we be on the move? Can we make decisions? Elimelech dies, leaving two sons who later married two Moabite uh, girls, um, Orpa and Ruth. Orpa means stubborn, and Ruth means friendship. Why? Because um, in the Hebrew, that is translation, by the way, the other character, Orpa, Orpa there, is, 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 is stiff naked. Her name means deep, deep naked. On the other side, when the mother realizes things are difficult, she's the quickest one to actually obey orders and do what the mother had said. And I said in the first service that some of us in our families, if you made any joke to tell your wife, go. Kumbe wanazaenda, Mr. Mungai. This is what happens in this case. I'm starting to preach. Amen. Because actually, hakuna kuzungumuza hapa. Naomi anaongea hawa watu. Uyu mama anaenda na anaenda kabisa. Be careful with some jokes you make in your family. Because utaachwa, na itakuwa hivo, na ita, utasema ilikuwa muza. This girl obeys, <laughs> na akaacha. Akaenda tu na mna hivo. Watu wama. Panyia karo wambia enda nyumbani. Muchezo tu. Na hivo, na ikawa hivo. So this girl <laughs> departed and went. The Bible is silent whether she got married. But in a very slight mode of provocation and proposition, this girl goes. Ruth, the Bible says, she actually stays around. Her name means friends because she was a friend to, um, to the mother. But again, she's also stubborn because mama has a blank check to write the value. There are hardships. I, mama has said, I can't marry you. That is the truth of the matter. She says, and your God will be my God. Of course, she had loved something in Naomi, which I want us to really extrapolate into very fundamental, the God Jehovah, because the other God of Moabites was not God Jehovah. And so in that quest, Ruth is determined and devoted to the mother-in-law. Many families exist with buried challenges. As I said earlier, I think and I believe that we don't have perfect families. When we see even the pictorial, Reverend was pointing for us last time, our deputy senior pastor, about a pictorial of a healthy family that is normally put in cartoons. I want to say in the books that we want to sell. But truth be said, there are underlying things that are hitting families, sicknesses, lack of money, lack of job, lack of joy, lack of many things that you'd want to name them here and there. But yet again, when you look at the book of Ruth, it actually depicts both. That in a family of two, when we have stubborn and a friend, still God expects them to be together. Now, the most reassuring thing about this story, which leaves me with a lot of question mark, is if indeed Naomi meant that these people, all of them, make their choices and go. But now uh, the Ruth delays around and later on gets Boaz. And Boaz gets in the lineage of David, which is the lineage of who? Um, Jesus Christ. That's why I told you there must have been a joke which Orupa took seriously. Buana <laughs> Swesan, that is my own hypothesis. Because if indeed now this lady stays around the Lord and there is a blessing, then it's likely that if Ruth also followed Orupa, then there should be nowhere we are reading about Jesus Christ in this case. So it means then that in a family, actually, both friends and both stubborn people are there. In a family, we must have a lost sheep. Amen. Last Makondo Moja Ipote, Buana Swesan, let it not be you are the only sheep, but Kama Ikonyingi, there will always be a lost sheep. And this is what I want us to suspect in a family. I have looked at my own family in a simple sampling. I'm trying to imagine others. I don't know many others. You guys are too many. But in a family, there is always that sister 
there is also that sun that makes you pray every day, that makes you put passwords on all devices, that makes you lock the fridge and even have some separate account in a family. There is always there. And if they lack in every person, there is stubbornness, either Ruth or even Orpa. So I'm speaking to all of you. Amen? So all of you who are perfect, maybe just a part of imperfectness I will address. For some of you who are families, I will address some of your full components in your family. But then, when this happens, will we be able to explore love, which is the main theme of the book of Ruth, commitment, devotion, as an antidote to the things that I have not done well. That we will love one another in family. We talked about friendship. And Rev mentioned something that I went and looked at it when the Bible says that there is a friend that sticks closer than our brother. And I looked at it. Kumbe friends are stronger. But yet, friendship is weaker in families. Because we tend to look for help elsewhere more than families. If some of you have problems, actually, why you read that scripture, you say, you are my friend, and that scripture makes meaning. It's because our families does not have friendship. And it's because of love. In a slight provocation, we can be left. In a slight provocation, we can be buried. In fact, I watch many things on TikTok. In fact, some people would, the people who will finish you are those who are closer to you. Commitment and devotion. Um, number one in the exposition of this text, I want us to look at famine. This, is a, this disaster hits the land, and it makes family make a decision for freedom, as a whole family. Elmer, he chooses. When there is famine, you don't say, I'm going to look for food. All of you go for looking for food. This is what happens in this place. The freedom and the quest of food, which may connote in our place a disaster, like we had floods. Okay? And sometimes and oftentimes, disasters hit our families and causes many patches. Then we lose one of our beloved ones. You would always see a gap, blames, or who did not contribute, and all that. Loss of a child, loss of income, loss of one, or even both sicknesses, they will always be there. In this case, it was famine. Now, what I also didn't know is these people were running away from famine, but the Bible did not say what they died from. Because where they went, Aikwa <laughs> Nanja, but the Lord remembered the people where they came from. So they said, we will go back. You can be running away from disaster only to find another disaster. Buana swe san. Obama baba unaoa, unaacha bibi fulani. Unaenda kupata huyu mwingine ni moto wa kuotea mbaya. Bwagu sasa tunapata kwa guzi. Muso ile anasema bwagu upata kwa guzi. Kwa guzi ni zaidi ya bwagu. Sijui hiyo Kiswahili la maanisha hii. So, these people didn't want to die from hunger. But they died from something else. It's your homework. What did they die from? But truth be said is, disasters happen. And disasters make us make decisions as families. And those decisions can make us or break us. I'm talking about how do we remold ourselves amid these of things that did not happen. Verse 6, which is more reassuring and is getting to where I'm saying. It says this, and I'm reading it keenly because when she heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, Naomi and her daughter-in-law prepared to return home from there. It was not an issue they were mature that nini bakini hapa niende ni cheki. She also just does the same thing the husband had done. And all of them chooses to go back. But the more important thing that I want to mention in that text of understanding is that there is a place of God. That even when there is disaster, God will always visit us. Say amen. We had floods recently, but it is gone. We have had places last year when we had famine. It, nothing is permanent in our lives. We are only lacking but today. But God will visit us. And that is why we need to trust God with our families on the altar for many things. The Bible says, and the Lord remembered his people. He remembered all of them, his families. So it is possible for God to bless a family. That's what I'm saying in this place. Because he did not just come and bring even food to El Melech, who was looking at the Naomi. It, the Bible says, and he remembered his people. So it is possible that even when we have lost sons, 
God is our ever-present helper whenever a disaster strikes us. Amen? The Lord had visited his people. Psalms 46 verse 1 to 2 normally says, the Lord is the present help in times of trouble. As we go through remolding, let's understand the place of God. As we are actually in the same portion of scripture, when Naomi decided to go back there, she actually says that your God will be my God, the family altar. That my children will look at my God. The most unfortunate thing that we have in families, even some of us who are born again, when things strike us, people will only look for your clothes. If you are a lawyer, ukikufa, naangalia ni gani na nitosha. Now no one looks for the Bible. No one looks for the church. I want to appreciate even these people. Imagine when we come to the church and we Some of us are very bad in looking for God in families. And we have made it to look like, okay, we must change this in Jesus' name. Amen. So that we don't just seek in the homes. And the only thing that we want to give our children and our wives are things. Not God. They can't see God the Bible says, and God remembered them. So, wakatu naenda nyumba. Ata sisi, ni kwambia ata watu wakikujanga kwa ofisi ya mchungaji. Wanafikiria pesa. Now, diko niwe utakuwa na kaka karibu na pesa. Watu wakikuangalia. Tami nitakuwa na omba hapa. Nikiona hapa sikiri na kuangalia. Help me to see God. Amen. Because this thing can make you lose it. If you don't see God in everything you do. So, in this case, when God remembers this, Ruth seems to have admired Naomi's devotion to God. And so she says, even if it is death, I will die there. She was not just looking after the clothes that will fit you. Or even a car, you know. And I know some of you, I'm saying I know by prophecy, that you are in court because of the estate that was left behind. You are not even looking at Nibidigani, which thing that made this person successful. And I told you last time when I preached here, I think it was in the Kesha or in the Wednesday meeting, that when we pray, we pray. When we work, we work. But when we pray, God works. Basically meaning that when we actually love the Lord, God prospers the work of our hearts. Now, unfortunately, if we don't teach our generation to look for God that helps us prosper, we lose it. So there is the power of us knowing the God in our families. Number seven, verse 7, because I'm picking some few things there for our understanding of remolding. The power of friendship as an antidote that helps us in our families. The Bible says she went out with her. Early marriage went with the wife. And when things went wrong, the mother-in-law went with the daughters-in-law. My wife and many of you. You know mother-in-laws are one of the territories to take. Ladies, no. In fact, one day when I was in Atriba, I wanted to do a service for mother-in-law. Some of you are mother-in-laws. And the challenge is because mother-in-laws love their sons so much, and they cause conflict of interest. Now, in that case, majority of you who are married in a place like the opera and Ruth, I can surely tell you, to walk with the mother-in-law, that was something. That was friendship in itself. Live alone, Ruth alone. To walk the three of them. I want you to think if you have your mother-in-law. Will you want to behave? Now wives, Just think, I don't know your mother-in-laws. But I want you to do some good math. This is difficult. Because I was told that my mother, <laughs> that is what Nganga was saying. My mother was with me always. My wife only came when I was an adult. So, why should he say Although the Bible says, live. So the Bible is commanding me a day to live. It will tell me, take me equivalent years. I stayed with my mother for me to be able to break the bond. You get it? So it's not easy. So in this case then, also if we are to model these things of family, and I said I'm talking about New Zealand, there's some friendship. Majority of our children who are in teenagehood, they are struggling in what you call sibling rivalry. They are competing. Who does that love? Who does not do this? So you see, if we really want to remodel, we would want to see. These people walked. They walked back as a family. And I know even some of you, by virtue of maybe things didn't go right, you drive differently and you go to work in different places. There is need 
of friendship in our families. There is need of friendship in our marriages. So that we are not talking about some people who are just a mere assemblage together. Okay? We looked at it and Elder was preaching about when Adam found Eve, he sees woman, the bone of my bone and the flesh. And then Suma was trying to act. When things went wrong, she says, that woman you gave me. When did the friendship turn to realize hata watu wanazomanga wachungaji hiyo bibu ilinipa hapo kanisani mimi nalete wanga tu kuwashikanisha so when do i become the person who gave you the wife so you want to look whether my hands are blessed evans so ulikuja tu na upa mela tumshikanisha hapa sasa unaanza ku intradicate my this this is lack of friendship in our families and that actually makes a lot of patches you realize you understand and when did it Adiki kimutu. Yaani mifika mahali na kuwa kimutu. <laughs> eh. I need to continue. Time is not on my side. But eight to ten. Naomi encourages their daughter-in-laws to make a decision. He actually brings them to the reality of what has happened. And my sisters and my dad they who have come because of Nelly. We need to accept that when people die, they have died. Bwana asifiwe sana. Bwana asifiwe. Yeye kidogo sema honi. Niko na ring nafikiria tu hiyo bwana yangu ameenda. Bwana asifiwe sana. Anaenda hapo kwa Kaburi. Sema bwana bwana yangu, ah. Kuna walio hao wanaongelesha mtu amekufa. Amekufa. Bwana asifiwe sana. That's why when you see me in the funeral I address the living. That's why when I address the dead. Now who me tells them go back and find a husband coming to the reality check and by the way if you have ring i don't know but i am helping some of you who are mourning too long umeweka nguo mwingine anafanya makumbusho my friend mtu akienda hii ni mwili imebaki pale hata it is not remain watu wale wanafanya kwa mochari wanajua ukikufa kama ulikuwa reverend bwire unapatanga new title let let is a title let <laughs> coming to the reality na wanaandika anga mzuri the let something news editors they call it let doctor you become let uh, let me call some of you have few titles you may think i'm calling you home but the lord will call you home you become let hata tukiweka hapo maua come to the reality now this is the place in the case that things have not gone right you need to remarry bwana aswe sana Nimeona kwa Facebook mtu anasema you are dating and you are marrying. Sasa ni confused. Sasa the place to marry is to come ameenda. So anawaambia she was giving them the right biblical doctrine. Go and get married. Bwana asifiwe sana. So let's come to the reality that when things don't work, particularly for the permanent failure of us to see the beloved ones in our family, we also try to see God to release us and make a step. I have seen others wakiona ameoa anasema na alikuwa anafurahia akienda kama ameenda makuruhusu amen unaoa tu sasa familia wanaenda huko kwa family member na alikuwa ameoa dada yetu sasa ameamua god has freed you it is biblical and what naumu was doing is okay are we together so mziande kukosana oba oh alikufa huyu hakumpenda ndio maana ameoa my friend it is not good for man to be alone that is one mold that was the original mold Now you remodel you get to marry and that is the place where we allow so so get off grief if you are once married and if you can continue to wait wait if you have a ring you cannot tell me you are married to the late just say i'm single i have been widowed and try to come and if you can remarry you will remarry It is biblical I have mentioned there that Bible prohibits remarriage whatsoever reason so long as the other spouse is still alive Luke chapter 16 verse 18 he says whoever marries another wife or another person when the spouse is still living then commits adultery so then in this case Naomi was actually just asking the daughters in the right thing to do go and get married so they were to just get off something and do so there was no wrong actually even for Orba to go back by the way and there was nothing wrong about Ruth remaining because all of them were to get 
The only worry is Naomi did not have sons to give them. Are we together? We are still trying to explore that. Passage 16 to 17 speaks about their gods. Then Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me. Be it so severely if anything but death separates you and me. What that particularly means is a testimony of Ruth's conversion. Originally, Ruth was not of God. So in this case, she has seen the life of the mother-in-law. And in that case, she is living, worshipping the God of Jemosh, to Jehovah of, the God of Jehovah of Israel. First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9 to 10 talks about and prohibits us worshipping gods which are not true gods. So in this case then, goes back to the place I say, the place of God in our families. What is the God we worship? And some of us who are here, my friends, I'm speaking this humbly. While we give you the freedom as families to plan how you do funerals, don't put us in a way of controversy. Because some of us, when we come to Bari, you know now, what is that? The God of Chemosh, when families are not doing this, we must have some of you who stand the ground and lead people in terms of disaster. Hata wengine wa maambua muruke moto. Nasema tu kuna vitu nasikianga tutijeziona. Lakini Nigeria they happen so much of them. When disaster hits, unaambua uruke ruke marakada. And then things will be okay. Tell them that we can pray and things become okay in the name of Jesus. It becomes very hard for us to guide you in the moment of grief as a family. Or in the moment things are not going right. But you should know that you can choose God and choose God. Ruth says, where you die, I will die. This is somebody who had resolution to do in Jesus' name. When I was looking for my dad, I found where he was staying. And then I looked for my dad for almost six years. And the last two years, I had to make trips for two years. And the last trip, I had actually to travel entire 24 hours. So when I was most near to where he lived, because I stayed in this place, I went and my uncles refused that first of all you may find him alive. You are not the first one. You should not the one who should look for him. Because there are some cultural rights that were to be done. So they were making it very hard. We tried to send people, I tried to look for money. So when I was in, in when I became a pastor, I see this thing is hindering my ministry. So I took it myself. I had some friends. I told you people that you should have friends who are not even in Sita. So I had a brother from, from Hatum. Very good bishop. And another friend of mine, a former pastor of deliverance. And then others, uh, one of our senior pastor's spouse. And so we took this expedition and we prayed. And say we will do this expedition and I will look for my dad. Against the will of my uncles, they can listen to this. Against the will of my father. So I would come from my mother. I would come literally from Nairobi. I went. The nearest I came is when I saw his documents and his bank statement. So when we almost made the way to go and get him, I heard people mention some few things. At the end of the day, it will not be right. The lawyers believe this and they are here. And I'm speaking to you not as a lawyer, but a converted person. But one young man was born again as evangelist, somebody. He said, I will take you. He was looked with a different eye. Remember, I've gone alone. And so... We secretly I saw him. I went back to Nairobi. Imagine that trip. I went back to Nairobi. I got that person. Can you pick a sub? Can be Otakuja. I will take you. So when we went, um, we crossed the border. We could not actually use. All of us crossed the border. He knew where we were to cross the border. We didn't cross even with the right documentation. Kuna maali. But please take. Please. I was born again. I know where to pass through in Busia. One as well. And I'm just making some little confessions. So there are some routes on Busia that you don't need to, to get. Or anyway, it's East Africa. So we went through without checking in. It was late. Um, so we went on a motorbike. Because we were fueling. And then we realized my dad had changed his name at one point. So at six o'clock in the morning, 
nikafika where my dad married my stepmother when i landed people scattered i look like my father i had gone with my brother they say he has risen <laughs> hey they i i had the community come hey hey what ah then we introduce ourselves they became calm and then they said your sister is somewhere so we had to move the way from to this side of Bulimbo to all the way now to Tororo my other sister now was in Tororo at least she can speak english we struggled to talk to my stepmother because she could not speak kiswahili she would speak english but we could repeat it. if you repeat the luya language repeatedly a ugandan hears and then the ugandan also speak like five times and then you hear so we were able to get something and i was hungry now when i got my sister the trial which my uncle were actually restricting us to do came i'm hungry and it is late one is i was not to eat and i was not to sleep there nikauliza yo pastor manyara is now the chaplain ask him you know this story he still in here you has been the chaplain ask him this story although he was actually arrested when you are coming back <laughs> Um so they cooked pilau. And so I remember the words of my uncles. You will not eat with the people you have not stayed with. We were to do something. Then I remember mbona I looked at manyara I kama sema tutaomba ukuli. So I had to choose between famine, hunger and dying maybe a curse. But you know hunger was going to be instant because I was almost dying. <laughs> So then the thing is in a pragmatic is I was to choose I die now or they cast me I die tomorrow. So I said I will not die now so I will eat so we prayed for food and then uh, I'm waiting for the cast. One as we said the rest is history. We must choose our God and follow him. My uncles later on here I went of course some of them when they go they used to audition to ask for cows to lay a mtoto hata kama amule ni werevu and some of you as as I know you I went alone and I found it that way I was given the place my sisters my aunts come we have not done those rites why do you allow us to start doing some rites in your funerals and your born again we must remode the family we must choose the god we have I've written a book on death practices and experience in Africa. The many people who are practicing syncretism, the religion above tradition, are Christians. So ukifika pale mwili ifesi huku, yani mpaka na ulira sasa itafesi wapi? Nana na beba. Mtu amekufa my friend. Hata mkileta shimo tuweke hapa na nyenye namse bora tumlalishe pole pole. It's okay. God in the testimony number i'm done with the exposition let me go to application and then i'm done in six minutes admit there is a patch in your family there was famine and true the three ladies had lost their husband that is true many of us anyway we don't want to actually be called even if you lost your your spouse or somebody just come to terms with the reality and then you'll be able to do that because we have families who cannot acknowledge one weakness to the other we have one who's right who's right today i'm declaring to you when you go home agree that all of you are wrong amen because the right and wrong is what is making the process of reconciliation become difficult the breadwinners had died and the, the calamities had stricken the families admit that there is a problem in admitting our flaws in our families we remodel we try to remold again we build unconditional love i said in the past service that love is never love when it is not actually covered there are things we cover one another in the family one as we son so when we actually admit that we have our flaws that one has done a mistake many of us have attempted then that is okay we i cannot by the way in any case also falsify my mother like my stepmother because she was poor she found somebody who would give her land of course she went and sold her portion where my portion was so it's just a part of thinking of trying to put things we try to pray for them and say our families were not perfect but when and how can we go forward we declare and say we love one another my mother when she come to visit me she will come here she came when and stronger she will sit here she's a muslim and i said in the past service she loves me even more than my real mom 
she was the first one to come and see our last born. And my last born was born in Kajiado, I said in the first service. Our second born was born in Nairobi. Our first born was born in Nakuru. We are prophesying another one to be born in Wasenigisho. But the thing is, she will sit here and she will listen to the whole sermon, even though her religion is different. Some of us, even you don't love, go to that Catholic church and sit. It's love. Because when we start poking holes and putting this, it doesn't. Ruth chooses to walk with the mother and go with them. Let's admit flaws and know how we cover one another in our families. Number two, in terms of our applications, agree how to resolve conflicts or what we call what we are not agreeing about. Naomi wants that the daughters in law go back to their homestead and look for the. And she has no problem, by the way, with Orpa going in the way she went and this one remaining because when she refused, they agree. We disagree to agree. That is what they say in conflict resolution. And that is what Ruth does in this place. In the family, seek to agree, seek to look and find a common ground on coexistence and avoid doing the things we do. Guanikana. I said in the past service that some of us, even the family conflicts, Munakosana kwa bibi, makweka kwa Facebook. Na ujakufa unamuka tu hapo, naona elpa zubwire, we ulikataa kunipikia. Umaona hizo vitu mutu anambia? Hati nilikula tu chapati moja. Unaona kwa Facebook. And yet you share the same roof. Agree on these things. If we don't remodel this, this is when you realize somebody cannot go to church. You are trying, where will you hide? By their Facebook is global. Once you are there, your spouse will stay home. Because I can't happen. Uwa mseni wenye letema bibi yaka ilu mnyima chapati. Na niliona kwa Facebook. Because it does more harm when we, some of us, take some of the serious things we should have resolved and put them in the public. Let's handle and keep families' feuds at home. Buenas Wesa. I know we have also MCCGs. Be moderate. Be moderate. I should guide you. Buenas Wesa. I learned this. Otherwise, kuna dada tatoka hapa and zema nanataka mutuyombe kama MCCG. Sasa, you become a prayer item. Choose what to share. Buwana Sfiwe, I love you so much. I'm giving you some wisdom. Sinazema kitu mzee ogola. So, um, I'm not saying we hide things. But there are some feuds and some disagreements. Let's handle them at home. Let's do them very well. That will help our family. Families were meant to resolve their own things. The world was not supposed to come there. The church has come in and we are there for you. That we keep even to ourselves. But I want to encourage you in terms of modeling. Let's find these priests who are our husband. Keep them. Even some of us who are now bringing up our children. Don't anika those two things for many people elsewhere. I had mentioned this about this lady being this. We don't know where she went, so I will not talk much about that. But I want to say, which I've said, that get over this social media of many problems. You are putting them everywhere. Unless it's going to help us to grow and encourage us, leave it and get permission. Some of the things I share with you is because it has helped me to grow. The last time when I was growing up, I was asked to use my father's name. So I really struggled because no one wanted to adopt me. Um, so now having this, my name, my son name is Egesa. Egesa is my father, Alexander Mabalu Egesa. But I didn't find him with that name when I was looking for him. He changed his name along the way. So every time I say Egesa, the guys used to say that in school, I would cry. So you may find what was wrong, Elder <laughs> Jane. So I talk about it. It has helped me to come to terms. So for you, if you decide that keeping it will help you, but if it help you to cry more, come to me. I will give you therapy in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, when I was looking for scholarship for my, my KCAP, the interviewer made a mistake. After the greeting, he said, tell me about your father. The interview ended there. Because <laughs> I cried uncontrollably. And then uh, I was told I passed the interview. But I, after the greeting, they asked me, tell me about your father. I cried. And then they took me out. And they didn't bring me in. But they gave me the scholarship. So um, get over these things of measure bashing and all that. And that will be a blessing to you. Number last is that I've talked of admit, I've said of agree. 
accept the reality. The reality is when calamities, when things are not good in our families, many of us don't accept. We are a full church of many people, and I admit, some of us, our children have conditions, and I want to ask our elder Jane to stand. You see her. This elder is now heading the Department of Challenges. Please be upstanding. Uh, let us know some challenges some of us have. Be seated. Some of our children cannot talk. They cannot walk. And there is nothing you cannot do. You, you can do about it. As a family here and at home, accept it. Don't come at a place where that thing does not help. Or as you didn't get children. I mentioned in the past service that some of us, by virtue of maybe something happened to your bodies, you cannot sire, you cannot get your biological children. When you accept the reality, you will actually come to the argument on how do we get children in our family. Sitam allows you to adopt children, and that should not be a stigma to any of you. In Jesus, many of our pastors have been able to do that. I've told you that we have adopted two more. Now we have five. And this is serious. This is not an example. We have two more. Have another boy and another girl. You saw them sit here. Those are the children of my late um, cousin. Who the husband was not there. We have brought them in our family. And it's acceptable, although it's not very formalized in terms of this. Many of us would want to accept the reality. And I'm speaking this because the things that are drawing us apart are issues that you can't control. Something happened alongside your life. You lost or else you cannot sire. Let's come and accept the reality. Talk to those people you can, and we can help you to do that. Some of us, I know many of our children are out there. By virtue, maybe. You have attempted to get children, and maybe almost you get there, you cannot because of maybe the shortage of some few things in there. We will give you medical and professional advice on how to sire and be able to get there. So let's get up from that cocoon rather than just kila sikuna sema, whoa, whoa. Hmm? And I know, and I say it is not from this an example. Mutaliambia mutu, sasa mimi, nawekache muti ya una matunda. Nawe ukiwe niwe mutunda muti ya una matunda. What will you do? Because we are bashing one another and making that we can't accept the reality. There is no perfect family. If you are looking for one, then you won't get. It's only us who are trying to perfect one another and walk in the ways of God. May God be the convergence. And that is what Ruth does. Bad things happen to good families. I have mentioned that. And I also say there are good bad things that happen to bad people. There are people here like chokora wanafanya tu even wanazaba na sisi tunaombea watoto eh umesikia kitu inaitwa teenage pregnancy it's not accidental pregnancy na mimi hapa naombea mtoto baba i'm just saying it's not me i'm just saying uh yet ni voluntary so lakini chokora wanafanya mchezo tu huko nje bana na na mtoto hapa tunaomba mpaka tunatoa sadaka na sacrament inaitwa sacrifice kwa baby hakuna kitu some things happen to good Bad things, good things happen to bad people. And I'm not saying Chokora bad people. What I'm just saying is when those who are not even looking for children, one apart, and others who are looking for, are not getting. Let's just accept the reality and walk in Jesus' name. And accepting the reality, we establish a new connection. Um, your God will be my God. Look at that. You move from God of Chemosh to God of Jehovah. Okay? When you accept some reality, you move. I sometimes feel very free to see that God has done this. And I say, God, you are so amazing. You loved me when I was running. The Bible says in the story of the prodigal son, when he saw the son, you embraced me before I came near. So when we accepted the reality that I am not in the right place, God is able to hold you. We also recognize emotional disconnects and we deal with them squarely. There are things that are to do with our families not behaving well or being served well. The thing is, if we want to remodel them, let's accept. Let's sit down and just agree. The truth be said is, I'm a bad husband. It's a bad husband. You have tried, my friend. Because some of you ladies to listen Munaombanga mukilia, mpaka tunashanga, kweli mungu anasikia na naomba, as if you are cursing. Let's just come and accept the reality that you cannot change your husband. The Bible says, actually it's not the heart. Psychology says you cannot change your spouse. Some of you have been praying to change for them. You, might, you can only live with them. 
Unajua wewe zinibadilisha. Amen. Bwana asifiwe sana. It's only that you come to that reality so that you behave. Kuna watu hapa hawezi badilishwa at room temperature and pressure. We will see your true self. And STP, room temperature and standard pressure. Mtu anatokezea tu. Nilitembea na wanaume mpaka huko cheptebo. Walipokuwa peke yao wakaanza kuimba hivyo. Ume meji vali yango. Wanaume, the men here, they know that song. Boys will be boys. Wana behave wengi tu wakiwa. Ah, kana kana. Nasikiza hivyo. So you can't change an adult. They just be where they are. Finally, and as worship team comes, is that family are meant to have an ending ties. God anticipates our families to be together, to be tied together, to be close to one another. If anything happens, as Reverend said, they will ask you, where is your family? That is a fact. Whether the person is good or not. I was taking one of my kin to hostel, and they actually insisted that, who are you? I was not the next of kin, and yet I was the principal financial. But the hostel can't identify with me for anything else. This is why we are preaching to you. There are people who may take kimut. They are the only one who will actually take you out of a, 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 an accident scene. Let's remodel how we look to one another. And I say this because I said in the first service, some of us don't even talk to one another. One of my sisters from the other side has not been talking to me for the last two years. And it's because we did not agree on a certain right to do over my late dad. And so, Alcatrika, Kabadilisha Sim, not for me alone, even my mother, and my stepmother, the other end. So, we've not been talking. Now, Alcatrika Sim was out, and she went out of Uganda. She's it's in another country as well. So, yesterday, she sent me a friend request. Today, some of us need to go and send friend SMS to some people. We don't talk to some people in our family. Could be your brother, could be your sister, could be your mother-in-law. For me, it's two years. I don't know how many years you have not talked to somebody. I know for our wives, if you have not done 24 hours, that is too long. That is too long. We may want to evaluate that and see. The clarion call is that we must devise our ways to make our families hurt and remodel them. Whatever you do, let God be the convergence of this. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you for speaking to us. We bless you for being able to help us to understand where you anticipate to take. None of our experiences. Are